Hello. In this video, I'm going to discuss the way the body regulates our heart rate. Um, so I'll talk about the sinoatrial node, and then I'll discuss how the autonomic nervous system and endocrine systems regulate heart rate, and then finally how body temperature affects heart rate. Um, so first, the sinoatrial node is referred to as the pacemaker of the heart because it is the beginning of the conduction system of the heart and is what is controlling the contractions of the heart. Um, so it's located here where this arrow is pointing way up at the top. Um, it's a specialized bundle of neurons that's in the wall of the right atrium right at uh, the entry point of the superior vena cava. Uh, spontaneously generates action potentials that initiate heartbeats. So if left to its own to just generate its heartbeats, it would beat 100 beats per minute. Uh, of course, we know that our heart rate fluctuates and is rarely at exactly 100 beats per minute. It's usually above or below. Um, and so we have other influences that act on the sinoatrial node to cause it to uh, fire faster or slower. And that's how we control our heart rate. So the things that act on the sinoatrial node, so starting with the nervous system. So it is it's part of the autonomic <laughs> nervous system. It's regulated autonomically. Um, so the cardiovascular center, it's a nucleus in the medulla oblongata. Uh, so it does autonomic regulation of heart rate among other functions, but here we're talking about heart rate. Uh, it receives input from all sorts of different places. So lots of different higher brain centers and sensory inputs. So when we're regulating heart rate, we're considering what is happening around us. Did a bear just walk into the room and we have to get ready to fight or run away? Um, are we starting to participate in exercise? So there are all sorts of inputs coming from both our cognition on other higher brain centers and our sensory input that are going to influence what our heart should be doing. So a cardiovascular center is receiving input from all sorts of different places. And based on those inputs, it is either going to raise or lower heart rate. So it sends output to the heart to increase or decrease heart rate. And it does that via sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. So sympathetic, if we want it to go faster, parasympathetic, if we want it to go slower. So if we are in a sympathetic state, meaning fight or flight, and we need the heart to beat faster than 100 beats per minute, then we are going to activate the cardiac accelerator nerves. So those are nerves that originate at the cardiovascular center and they act on the sinoatrial node to cause it to fire faster. So faster heart rate. Um, so they innervate the conduction system, atria and the ventricles, and they release norepinephrine in this case as a neurotransmitter to speed up the SA node. Uh, then the opposite, the parasympathetic output would be the uh, vagus nerve, so cranial nerve number 10. Uh, so it also has an origin at the cardiovascular center, um, and so it goes down to the heart and innervates the conduction system, meaning sinoatrial node, and the atria, and it releases acetylcholine as its neurotransmitter to slow the SA node. So anytime our heart is beating at fewer than 100 beats per minute, it's because the vagus nerve is acting to slow it down. Um, so that's why we might use techniques to stimulate the vagus nerve is because it can help to slow our heart rate and soothe our nervous system and helps to stimulate more of a parasympathetic response. The vagus nerve in general, not only to the heart, but to many organs of the body is carrying a large amount of our sympathetic stimu parasympathetic stimulation throughout the body. Okay, then our endocrine system effect on heart rate uh, primarily here, it's epinephrine and norepinephrine. So uh, those are two chemicals that are used as both hormones and neurotransmitters uh, that both increase heart rate and epinephrine also increases the force of contraction of the heart. Um, then also thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, also increase heart rate and force of contraction. They also improve other different functions of the heart and the cardiovascular system in general, including systolic and diastolic function of the heart. Uh, so when we have thyroid dysfunction, whether that be hyper or hypo, so too much or not enough, uh, both increase risk of cardiovascular disease and increased risk of a variety of different cardiovascular 
um, complications and problems in either direction. So hyper or hypo causes different problems um, because of the effects that those hormones have on the cardiovascular system. So finally, body temperature also influences heart rate. So higher body temperature causes the SA node to discharge more frequently. Lower body temperature causes it to slow down. So it discharges less frequently. All right, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.